Well, let somebody uh, shout hallelujah. Uh, Several years ago, when we just came to this camp, I I came to pray for the new year. At that time, only the carpenters uh, were here with me. Well, carpenters, antelopes and snakes so I had time alone with God and, and I, I, I said to God as I was preparing for the thanksgiving that we follow I said daddy uh, just between the two of us. You are my daddy, I'm your son, so I can be frank. I said, coming Sunday, I will tell the people to praise you because it's my duty. But uh, let me be sincere with you. I said, in this year that is ending, I'm not sure I have something to thank you about. Talking father to son. And he answered me immediately. He said, son, is that true? I said, I'm just being honest. I said, okay. He said, get to a exercise book and pen. He said, January 1st of the year that is ending, you slept and you woke up. I said, that is true. He said, is it everybody who slept who woke up? I said, no. I said, can we put that down as a miracle one? So I put it down. He said, you traveled from Lagos to the camp. He said, can we put that down as miracle number two? I did. He said, you may not find enough food to eat, but did you get anything to eat at all since the beginning of the year? Within 10 minutes, I was on my face, thanking God. Is anybody here who had received any miracle at all from God since January 1 till now. Will you want to spend some few minutes saying thank you, Lord, in any way you want to do it? You want to do it standing? You want to do it on your knees? You want to, you want to dance? You want to shout? You want to rejoice? Is there anyone here who has anything to thank God for in this year that is ending? Anyone at all who has anything, anything to thank God for? Is he sleeping and waking up? Is he getting something to eat when you want to eat? Is it your ability to breathe, ability to sing, ability to move your hands, ability to move your legs? Is it that your brain is still working, your brain is still functioning, you are not in arrow right now? You are not walking about naked?
Is there any, any prayer at all that he has answered since the beginning of the year? Has God done anything for you at all since the year began that you could thank him for? How many times have you slept and you woke up in the year that is ending? How many times have you traveled and you arrived safely? Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will sing of the message of the Lord forever. I will sing. Oh, I will sing. I will sing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Savior. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Alpha, Omega, Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy of my praises today.
Alpha Atomega Any name of Baba Any name of Omega, beginning and the ending, we bless your name. We thank you for every day of January that we slept and we woke up. For every day of February that we slept and woke up. For every day of March, of April, of May, of June, of July, that we slept and we woke up. For every day of August, September, October, November, December, that we slept and we woke up. We thank you that in spite of everything the devil tried, we are still here. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people, tell him or her, whether the devil likes it or not. I will see the new year. It's too late for the devil now. Glory be to God. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 13 to 15. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 13 to 15. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, Benaliah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the son of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. I must confess that I was a bit shaken when the Lord gave me the theme for tonight. When he said, I'm to talk to you and tell you the battle is not yours. I 
As I move closer and closer to the new year and I sought his face more and more, it became clearer and clearer why I need to tell you that this night. Do not be afraid. I say it again. Do not be afraid. I repeat it one more time. Do not be afraid. The battle is not yours. Why? Well, you belong to God. You are a member of his family. According to John chapter 1 from verses 11 to 12, from verse 11 to 12, John 1, 11 to 12, he came unto his own, and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to be called sons of God, or children of God. And according to Romans chapter 8, verse 15, Romans 8, verse 15, yes, there's only one begotten son of the father, but the rest of us are adopted. And if you are adopted, according to law, you are exactly like the one who is born in the home. So you are a member of the family of God if you are a true Christian. And so you are very precious to God. Very precious to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Says you are not your own, you are bought. Oh, God paid a serious price to buy you. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, First Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, You are bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as expensive money. You know, we always say, you can buy anything, but you can't buy a child. To buy you, God had to send his son to come and shed his blood for you. You are very precious to God. If you are the only one in the world, Jesus Christ would have come down to die for you. You are very important. extremely important. The people in this world may not have any recognition for you, but the Father in heaven recognizes you. People have said to me, why do you say sir? To the servant in the office, why do you say sir? To your driver, why do you say sir? to the messenger because I'm talking to someone who is a VVIP of God tell the fellow next to you I am a VVIP of God they may not know you in Abuja your name may not mean anything in Asurok ha but your name means something in heaven. <laughs> you are a member of the family of the Most High God. You are royalty. You are His Excellency. Don't forget that one. You belong to the family of God. Not only that, 
A man can have many children. But if you, if you pay close attention in every family, you will notice that there is always one child, somehow, that is a favorite. The parents may try to hide it, but the truth will be there for all to see. There are things other children will do, and they will get punished. Then there's this particular child, he will do it, and they will only say, be careful. Have you noticed that before? Mm -hmm. You are not only a member of the family of God, you are a friend of God. In John 15, from verse 14 to 16, John 15, 14 to 16, he said, you are my friend. He said so. You are not the one who said so. And you are not just a friend, you are a choice friend. He said, I chose you to be my friend. I've said it before. I don't mind saying it again. I have many brothers. I have many sisters. I have many sons. My friends are less than 10. They're less than 10 in number. They used to be around 10. One or two of them had gone to, to rest. Chosen ones, special ones. People who get anything they want from me, anytime they want. People I weep when they are sad. And I laugh when they are happy. You are like that to God. You are a friend of God. That's what he said. And, and, and he said in John 15 verse 13, John 15 verse 13, he said, I love you so much, I laid down my life for you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. That is why the battle is not yours. Oh, no, 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 it's not yours. I mean, in, in, in Acts chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7, Acts 9, 1 to 7, Saul of Tarsus was going to, uh, he was persecuting Christian and he was going to get more people when the Lord stopped him. And when the Lord stopped him, he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Not my people. Why are you persecuting me? Uh, so I said, who are you? I mean, <laughs> I can't even see you. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You touch my children, you touch me. In fact, the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8, and, and, and that's a passage you must read when you get home. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible says, he who touches you touches the apple of the eye of God. I'm not sure you know that is in the Bible. Anybody who touches you, <laughs> it's not just touching God. It's reaching for the eyes of God. That fellow is dead. Oh, tell your neighbor, I'm happy the battle is not mine. That is why the Bible says you are more than conqueror. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Romans 8 verse 37. You are more than a conqueror because you are loved. Because according to Romans chapter 8 verse 31, Romans 8 verse 31, it says if God be for us, who can be against us? Let them try. They will know that they are dealing with the consuming fire. <laughs> Not 
Number two, why the battery is not yours? Is that things are different now. Whether you believe it or not, certain things happen to you during the Congress. You are not the same fellow who came to the Congress that left the Congress. No, 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 no. Things are different now. <laughs> the elders have a proverb. I will try to translate it in English as much as possible, but it will be difficult. They say in Yoruba, any for Joanna Woku, a bora bolaso. In other words, <laughs> if you think that I'm what I used to be, you are in trouble. Uh, it's a very terrible translation, but you get the point. There was a time before David had a turnaround. He could be put in the bush, nobody will remember him. Everybody will be at home, he will be there in the cold, singing. Singing to God, and only the animals were listening. But after he had his turnaround, when he sings, demons get out of the way. You may not believe it, but there is power in your mouth now. After David had his turn around, the kind you had just a couple of weeks ago, his hands were no longer the same hands. He could now punch a lion and the lion would die. Punch a bear and the bear would die. He can now use the same sling that he was using to kill birds and rabbits when he needed food to deal with Goliath. Things are different now. You are not the same fellow. If you believe me, shout hallelujah. So what is it that God is expecting you to do from now on? Number one, put your trust in God. Your trust in who? Say it loud and clear. Psalm 125 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 125 from verse 1 to 3 says, If you will put your trust in God, you will be like a Mount Zion that cannot be moved. He said, The rod of the wicked shall not rest on the lot of the righteous. That's a settled matter. Put your trust in God. That's number one. Number two, don't be afraid. You know, I've been saying this again and again now tonight. Let it sink into you. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 says, If you go to battle and you see a crowd, a people far, far greater than you fighting against you said, don't be afraid of them because the Lord is with thee. One with God is always a majority. A whole nation gathered against Elijah by the time he finished with them they were all on their faces. Don't be afraid. 
Second Chronicles chapter 32 from verse 7 to 8. Second Chronicles 32, 7 to 8 said, Be strong. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Those who are with you are more than those who are with them. It doesn't matter how many people are ganged up against you. They will fail. Take my word for it. I want you to go into the new year bold, strong, fearless. Why? The battle is not yours. And if God be for us, one who can be against us is not yet born. Number three, you put your trust in God, don't be afraid. That's very important. Don't be afraid. Because the enemy can smell fear. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Ask the scientists. They will tell you when you see a dog rushing at you, the dog is coming close to smell. First of all, if you are afraid, you turn, you see the dog, and you become afraid, fear produces a smell in your body. And the dog smells the fear, ah, he knows this is somebody I can attack. But the dog is coming, rushing at you, and you are not afraid, he draws close, he sees no fear, he stops. This is not somebody to be attacked. Don't be afraid. Tell your friend, please, don't be afraid. Put your trust in God, don't be afraid. Then the next thing you do is just get God to arise. Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 3 says, Let God arise and his enemies will scatter. How do I get him to arise? Praise him like you've never done before. In this coming year, praise him. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the afternoon, praise him in the evening, praise him like we've never done before. <laughs> After you praise him, then you call on him. Some of my children have asked me again and again, we hear that at night to go out, at times to get out by 11, you don't get back home until five. What is it you are praying for? All the hours. What are the things you are asking for? I say, more than 95% of the time, I'm just praising God. That's all I'm doing. What he has done in the past, is that not enough to praise him for? But it's not only the reason for praising him. If I praise him, he will arise. And when God arises, his enemies will scatter. Praise him. And then call on him. And see what he will do to your enemy. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 3. I know I'm rushing. I want to finish before we get into the new year. The new year is already knocking at the door. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 3. David said, I will love thee, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, my trust, my buckler, the honor of my salvation, my high tower. I mean, by the time he kept on saying, my rock, my deliverer, my... <laughs> God was already standing. I'm happy the choir chose a song, one of my songs. 
You are my real savior. You are my this, you are my that. You, are my... you sing that song and see what God will do. Call him by his name. Eulogize him. And he, is, he will stand up. And he said, when you do that, and he stands, your enemies are bound to scatter. The only thing is, as you are approaching the new year, before you call, remember as you are thanking him, pay your vows. Psalm 50, verses 14 and 15. Psalm 50, 14 and 15. Pay your vows. Because the Bible says God has no interest in fools. A fool is somebody who makes a vow and will not fulfill it. I want to conclude before the new year comes in. John 15 from verse 14 to 16, John 15, 14 to 16 says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And what is this command? You have not chosen me, I have chosen you that you go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. Then anything you ask the Father in my name shall be done for you. Go to the coming year with a determination to win souls like you've never done before. Go with a determination that not only will you win souls, you will follow them up until they are established. Go into the new year with the assurance that every prayer you pray will be given an answer. Ah, I think I can see spare some three minutes. For those of you who are yet to give your life to Jesus, if you are here, if you want to be able to say that the battle is not mine, you have to belong to the family of God. And you're only a member of his family when you are truly born again. So if you are here and you are not even sure of your salvation, you have only one minute to run forward as I'm going to count from one to seven. Counting now, one. Two. I know some of you gave your life during the Holy Communion. I'm just talking to those who came later. You see what you want to give your life to Jesus? You want to become a member of the family of God? You want somebody who will take over your battles for you and begin to fight? You better run forward and surrender your life to Jesus Christ now. Three. That's not the kind of clapping that will cause God to arise. <laughs> if you are going to praise him this year, you have to do it very well. I mean, the coming year. Did I say four? Five. Six. Oh, 
Okay, thank you. Those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. We are, we are watching the time. So those of you who are in front, cry to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. I want to become a member of your family. Please, Lord, receive me into your family today. Save my soul. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and pray for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Intercede for them for just 30 seconds. And those of you still on the way, hurry up. Hurry up. This is your opportunity, a great one, to be saved, to become a member of the family of God so that you can now take over your battles and begin to fight your fight for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I want to thank you for your word, and I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. I'm asking, Lord God Almighty, that as they have come forward, your blood will wash away their sins in Jesus' name. You will save their souls. You will write their names in the book of life. And from now on, they become members of your family. Anytime they call on you from now on, Father, please answer them by fire so that they will serve you to the very end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, those of you who have just come forward, I want to rejoice with you because from now on, I will begin to pray for you. And so I'll be needing your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. I'm going to ask the counselors to come and meet you where you are. So you stay where you are. The counselors will come. They will attend to you in a moment. Now, thank you, Father. I'm waiting for the counselors to come. But I'm also waiting for something to happen. Now jump on your feet and shout hallelujah. you to shake hands with seven people and say Happy New Year.
through a pocket. Amen. Amen. There's something we used to do years ago. When we want to make a joyful noise to the Lord. in those days is this. I will think of a song of my own. You will think of a song of your own. I will be singing mine, you will be singing yours, and it will combine and form a joyful noise to God. So think of your own song and sing it unto God. Sing unto the Almighty God.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. You're going to sing my song with me in a moment. But there's something we always do. It's our custom that as soon as we enter the new year, we want to block Satan completely away from our finances. So the first thing we do, as soon as we enter the new year, we give an offering to God. And with that offering, we enter into a covenant with God that in this new year, I will not spend the cover for the devil. I won't spend the cover on sickness. I won't spend the cover on court cases. I won't spend cover for the devil at all. So very quickly, take your offering, the first offering of the year, and then you are going to sing my song with me. And then i just give you a hint about what the new year contains. So very quickly, take that one now. Let's get that out of the way, and then we can proceed. You lift it up to the Almighty God and say, Father, with this offering, I make a covenant with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, this year, I will not spend for the devil. I will not spend on sickness. I will not spend on sorrow. I will not spend for the devil at all. Go ahead, talk to the almighty God about it. You are going to sing my song with me, and dance to the nearest basket, and drop your offering, and then we'll proceed from there. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise His name for the Lord is good and
Lord will bless your offering. In this new year, before this year ends, poverty will be forgotten in your family. You will not spend for the devil. You will not spend on sickness. You will not spend on accidents. You will not spend on tragedy. The devil will not taste your money. And God will open the windows of heaven wide over you. This will be a year of success for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Now sit down. I, I know you want to pray. I, I, I just want to get out of your way. And then you can come to the altar and talk to God. Settle the new year with him, whichever way you want, at your own pleasure. Let me tell you, just give you a glimpse. I won't tell you the full details, maybe until Friday night, about what God is saying concerning the new year. For every individual Christian, Particularly those of you who are members of Redeemed Christian Church of God, this is going to be a year of series of joy. Yeah. The reason is, it's going to be a year of series of victories. Now, by implication, it means it will be a year of series of battles. But you will win. <laughs> and that is why he asked me to tell you in advance, the battle is not Yes. <laughs> it will be victory after victory, shouts of joy after shouts of joy. Let me just leave it like that. The others, particularly for those of you who are members of Redeemed Christian Church of God, your pastors will be telling you. On the international scene, and we are going to rope Nigeria together with the international scene, because there are some people who are waiting to hear what we say concerning Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is part of the world, okay? Mm -hmm. The earth, this year, unless we pray very hard, is going to behave like a child that is having convulsion. Earthquakes in many places that it had never happened before. And that's one of the reasons you should pray for Nigeria. Volcanoes that have been dormant for years erupting. Hmm. If you look at the prophecy for 2019 for the international, I, I gave it to you as a Bible passage, two Bible passages. If you go through the two Bible passages, you will see fire. Fire. 
and flood. Where the Lord says, whatever we have seen this year or last year, is nothing compared to what is coming. Except his children will pray so that his healing hand will be upon the nations of the world. And the reason is sin is becoming far, far more rampant than before. Things that in the past could not even be mentioned is now being celebrated. And God is angry. But if we pray, and which one of the reasons why we should evangelize rapidly, God will help. This year, there will be changes of governments all over the world, in many places. Some of the changes will be peaceful. Some will not be so peaceful. That's about all I can tell you for now. Uh, of course, you know we are going to fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will tell you that, I'll tell you more about that on Friday, since, but you can see, enjoy yourself for now. <laughs> the fasting is not going to begin until January 11. Uh, so, <laughs> so you can see, celebrate, and and enjoy yourself. Now, it's one very important thing that Daddy said concerning those of you who are my children in particular. This new year, he will answer prayers. That is why I want to get out of your way. I want as many of you as want to come to the altar, to come to the altar, spend as much time as you want. I've already prayed for you now. Your future is settled. There will be shouts of joy. There will be many victories. The battle is not yours. He will answer prayers. Uh -huh. So, the altar is open, you come, nobody is going to stop you, you pray till you are satisfied, and then you can go. And I will see you on Friday, or is it, is it Thursday? Uh, I see you on Thursday for the Holy Communion service, and then from there, we'll move on to Friday. God bless you. Happy New Year.